Mark here from Rebel Training. So last episode, I showed you a technique for performing a sky replacement using the object tracker, a luma key, and the magnetic mask. Today, I wanna to show you a technique that you can use when tracking is not an option. Let's dive in. In the last episode, we took this clip of this picture that is a handheld shot with camera movement and we replace the sky with the still image using the technique of tracking the shot and applying the tracking to the sky. So a couple of astute viewers in the last episode asked the question, hey, why even bother with a Luma key? Can't you just use the magnetic mast and be done with it? And that may be true, but there's two reasons I added a Luma key that I want to explain. So here's what we did last week where we have, let me turn off the other layers here. We have our original shot that we tracked to this vent right here because it matches the sky movement. Then we added the still image of the sky and we used that tracking data right here so that the sky moves with the shot. Then we added a copy of our original shot on top and we used a Luma key to reveal this sky. We cut out the original sky in the video to reveal this still image of the sky beneath it but we had some problems here with our Luma key. So we added this on top where we used magnetic mass just to identify parts of the shot that we needed. Now the question is, why didn't you just use magnetic mass and no Luma key at all? In other words, if we turn off this layer and we go to this layer and we turn off the Luma key here, instead of the Luma key here, we could just say, hey, add magnetic mask and select everything except for the sky. I'll just click done to do it in one frame and there you have your sky. So a couple problems, you don't always get a great selection as you can see right here, might be able to fix that up. But the other reason is you can't always do this. And a good example would be something like this shot here, where if you tried to use magnetic mass to isolate just the sky or everything but the sky, control command M, you're not gonna be able to do it. So if I just try, I can get all the ground nice and easily, but when I try to get this tree and not the sky, uh, I'm never going to succeed completely. So we see our new sky popping in here, but the old sky is between the leaves here and you're never going to get there. So that's a reason you frequently want to combine these concepts. The other reason I did that, besides the fact that you can't always get a good magnetic mask to work in that way, is, let me turn the Luma key back on, that with the Luma key, you have the capability of blending in your new sky and the old sky. One way to do that is with a mix slider, and the reason you want to do this is often just plastering a new sky on top of an old sky isn't always going to look very realistic. But by blending them together, either using the mix slider here, or you can use the Luma controls. In this particular instance, it's going to be a little difficult because we had to create such a harsh key to begin with. But I can start to pull this down and you'll see the old sky start to creep in there and that will make a little bit better of a blend. So those are the two reasons that I took a little bit more complicated approach than just using magnetic mass to isolate all of the, everything but the sky and plaster it on top. Okay, so that method employed the object tracker. But what if you can't track the shot? This shot was nice and convenient because there's an object that matches the movement of the sky that was very trackable, that wasn't obscure, but that isn't always the case. So I wanna show you another option, which is to first stabilize the shot, take out all camera movement, combine it with the sky, and then add the camera movement back in. Now with this shot, if we go to the video inspector to stabilization and I turn on stabilization, it's gonna analyze it immediately because it's already done it before but it's fast no matter what. But notice that the key here is that the method is set to automatic and it's actually selected inertia cam, but the tripod mode is available. And that's not always the case. In fact, it's usually not the case, but if there's not a lot of camera movement like this one, I'll turn that stabilization back off. We can see it's not a lot of camera movement. So when I turn this on, tripod mode is available if I select it what happens is we get a fully locked down shot. So there's no camera movement at all now. There is, however, some warping you'll see in this building here going on in order to stabilize the shot. So we'll have to deal with that. But the fact that we can lock the shot down allows us now to do our sky replacement. Now you might be asking me, well, what if you can't use tripod mode? Well, we're gonna deal with that in the next episode. 
but let's look at shots where you can use tripod mode. So since we don't need to track anything, I'm immediately going to put the sky on top of this clip. Last time we used a luma keyer in order to reveal the sky. That doesn't always work, so this time we're going to use a different method, which is to go to the video inspector and change the blend mode from the normal default to darken. What darken will do is look at the pixels that are on top of each other and always choose the darker pixel between the two. So if I select that, immediately we get a lot of the sky showing up here and we get a lot of the ground of the still image showing up there too. Whatever's darker is going to be what's showing up. So before what we did is we took the sky and we cropped the bottom in order to kind of help us along there. This time I'm going to use a different method that's a little more flexible, which is back in the effects browser in the mask and keying category, I'm going to apply the graduated mask to this clip which basically will fade out the effect from this control point to this control point. So as I drag them up and down, you can kind of see the sky coming in there and disappearing. And if I pull down to about here, pull up to about here, we can create a rough overlap between the two. So that's a starting point where we've removed a lot of the still image, the kind of the ground here from this image. Now, it really didn't blend that great, but if we think about it, if we want the darker pixel to be chosen and it's not here, what we can do is lighten up the pixels in the video clip. So if I disable the top clip with V, I just want to lighten up the sky more in this shot so that the darker blue sky and the darker clouds in our still image will show through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a color corrector. doesn't really matter which one in particular here, but I'll go with uh, color wheels. And then I'm going to use a color mask in order to isolate the sky. I don't want to brighten everything. I just want to brighten the sky. So I'll sample the sky. And if I click on view mask, we can see it does a pretty good job right away. I'm actually going to turn off saturation and hue because I really just want to focus on luminance. I know areas of him are selected, but we're going to solve for him the way we have in the past in the last episode simply by using magnetic mask. So I'm just going to make sure the sky here is completely white and not worry too much about these areas. Now that I've done that, if I turn off view masks and turn our still image back on and I go back to our video clip, nothing's happened yet. We've masked out this area, but we haven't actually made a change to it. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the highlights and we can immediately see we're now getting more of the still image. I'm also going to bring up the midtones and see if that helps. And I'll play with the shadows as well. And that actually helps bring out a little bit more cloud detail right there. So by using the darken blend mode and lightening up the sky and using a graduated mask, we'd be able to combine these two shots much more easily. Let's take a closer look. I'll zoom up to 600%. And we see these bright areas because of the color correction. If I select that color correction and disable it, you'll see that we've brightened up these already bright areas on him. So we're going to do exactly what we did before. I'm going to shift Z. Option drag a copy of him up. Control command M for magnetic mask. Go back to the video inspector so the sampler from magnetic mask is available and select him. And that's all we really need of him. We don't really need the bottom part of him at all. Uh, analyze. done. Let's zoom in close again. And now this copy has the same color wheels correction, which we don't need. So I'll delete it from the top copy. And now we can see where we've gotten rid of that issue. If I turn this top one off and on, we can see how we fixed his highlight areas here, but haven't affected the sky at all. Great. So if we play through this now, we've got a completely locked down shot, locked down sky but we see this warping of this building here. So here's how we're going to solve that. This is kind of cool. Before we do that, I want to let you know that we've just released a brand new tutorial called Creating Effects with Masks in Final Cut Pro 11. In it, I show you how to use the magnetic mask in combination with other masks for color grading, special effects, text reveals, cloning effects, and much more. 
and it includes our RT Mask Effects plugin, a collection of 12 must-have effects built specifically for masked objects. It's on sale for a limited time. Check it out at the link below. I'm going to take another copy of this bottom clip, drag up. I'm holding the Option key down and keeping it registered to the left and the right so it doesn't move left or right. And now what we're going to do, I'm going to go to the very beginning of this clip, Add Magnetic Mask with Control Command M, select this building, and in fact, I'm going to actually I'm going to undo that. I'm going to move forward because I want to also select this. This warps a little bit too. You can see. The warping is really in all this area here. So I'm going to go to this point right here. Select the building, select these trees, maybe a little bit of the ground here. And now what's kind of cool about this, even though we haven't analyzed yet, I'm going to click Done because I only care about this one frame. I'm going to click Done and then immediately I'm going to press Option F to create a freeze frame. Because of that warping, I just want a single freeze frame of that building that isn't moving. I can delete the beginning of this clip, I can delete the end, trim this back. If we want to see what this clip is, I'll disable the other clips with the V key. And we can see we've just got that area there. And I'm going to move it below him because if I don't, notice right now it's on top of him right there. But if we move it below him, I'll just press Option down arrow. So it's below him. And now we've removed that warping from that area of the frame. And if we play that through, we have another sky replacement, but this time as a completely locked down shot. As a final step, I want to add the camera movement back in. Now, if you go to the effects browser and you go to all for video and you search on handheld, there is a built in handheld camera effect, but it's an effect, which means you have to apply it to a clip. So for it to work here, we would need to first create a compound clip of all this and apply it to the compound clip. I don't want to do that. So I created my own version of this simply by converting it to a title. I have it right here and I'll include a link to this in the description below for you to have. But I'm just going to take this and drop it right on top. And you can see that we've now added some camera shake right back into that shot. So let's look at a before and after. I'll option drag over a copy of the original one and I'll turn off the color wheel so we can see what it looks like and we'll play the original shot. Let's actually turn off the stabilization so we really see the original shot with the camera movement. Here's the original one with the camera movement. And here's our new shot with the new sky and camera movement. But what if the tripod mode isn't available? In the next episode, I'll show you how to deal with that. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm.